we begin with the manufacturing meltdown. Stocks kicking off the quarter deep in the red as a key read on the health of the U.S. economy slips to its lowest level since the Great Recession. So that got us thinking, is history about to repeat itself? We're firing up the Fast Money Time Machine for a trip back to a year ago when this was playing out on our air. You hear the music and you see the raging bull and you know what that means. The Dow hitting a record high for the first time since January 26, joining the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, which are both at all-time highs as well. So that was the setup heading into Q4 of last year. But wait, fast forward just a few days and this happens. Fast Money starts right now with breaking news. Stocks getting shattered today. The Dow having its worst day since February, tanking more than 800 points. The selling accelerating into the close. And we close at the dead lows of the day. S&P 500 now having its worst losing streak in two years. So the question I pose to you all tonight as we kick off Q4, are we setting up for a repeat of last year, Tim? Well, think about year over year where we are in terms of expectations. So expectations on earnings, we've ratcheted down dramatically. We were in high double digits expectations at this point in 2018. Think about the Fed. If anything, people were very concerned about the Fed's next move to tighten, not to cut. Um, If anything, we're evaluating one, possibly two. And if anything, the markets would be very disappointed by nothing. But that is not where we were last year. And third of all, um, last year can't happen because of last year. I mean, my sense because is... Because it happened last year, can't happen well, again this year? Well, yeah, I mean, look, look at positioning based upon what happened last year. So many people were destroyed uh, in that two-month period where volatility went from, from nowhere to being very relevant. Uh, I think you have a dynamic, and we talk about the equity under positioning, mm-hmm. and, and I think, therefore, I, I, you know, look, the fundamentals are getting worse and worse. Um, the market uh, is aware of those fundamentals, and if anything, I think at this point, the market is, is offsides on a move to the upside. Yeah, we put together some then and nows in terms of differences. You, you nailed a couple of them. Another key one, obvious, is rates uh, hit a high last yeah. year, about 3-plus percent. Three this year we're at 1.64 or wherever we are right now. Pete, but Tim brings up a good point in terms of positioning. We're much more defensive sure. going into the fourth quarter versus yep. where we were last Rotation year. Rotation into some yeah. of the defensive names, absolutely. I mean, some of those names are probably stretched, but they're maybe stretched for the right reasons because people are looking for areas where they feel more comfortable, where they're getting some, some kind of a yield, and obviously that's put them in a lot of these other areas. I think the other thing is when, you, when, when we're looking at this, this is still about the trade war. And, and, and we already know in the next week or so, we're going to start getting a little bit closer to finding out where are we, how far apart are we. Maybe. And then obviously Do you believe just, that? Maybe. I, I think we'll at least, <laughs> yeah, I think we'll have a little sense of how far apart are we and, or, or have we come a little bit closer. And I think the aggressiveness of the Chinese and the fact that they're willing to come here, we're willing to get into these trade meetings, that says something. And I, and I think, and that's why when it wasn't Trump, but it was actually the Chinese that said we're going to be doing this, that got me a little bit more encouraged. I'm, I'm nervous. This is, I'm way more nervous now because, all right, the Fed has cut. They were tightening then. They've been cutting now. So that's one thing that we don't have that much firepower left to right. go, mm-hmm. right? So that's something. The trade war had just gotten started. I think it was July of 2018 when it sort of just got started. And I really believed at that time that it would be a relatively finite amount of time before it would be resolved, that it would be really not that big of a deal. Well, here we are, you know, 13 months later, 14 months later, I think they're further apart by a good deal than they were then. So that's a negative to me. You have economies around the world, which Tim touched on, which are weaker, right? They don't have as much firepower anymore. So um, to me, that all sets up, and, and you have a much higher market. Right. Yeah. So all of those things together make me more nervous. However, you know, I'm long. I'm always long, but I, I have a lot of protection. I feel like, you know, the VIX was up a lot today, but I think it should have been higher than where it was a week or two. Yeah, ago. we've got a lot of tariffs that are going to come into effect mm. unless there's more progress uh, made in these talks come December. And these tariffs are going to hit the U.S. consumer, which is a very different scenario from what we had last year when there weren't tariffs in place that hit consumers. I think you have to go back to August 1st. That's when Trump kind of threatened these consumer tariffs. 300 billion, I think, that were going to go into uh, into effect on September 1st. And then we get to the end of August and it caused a lot of volatility in the stock market. And we saw those tariffs, or at least half of them, pushed out to December 15th. I think that's going to cause a good bit of trepidation. It's kind of interesting when you think about the S&P 500, going back to our rewind, we're basically in the same exact spot. I mean, we haven't made a lot of progress, except for what Tim said I think is really important 
important is that expectations, at least for earnings, are much lower. So you'd say, OK, that's kind of put a lid on the stock market. Then you go to rates, right? And you say to yourself, well, that's actually good for the stock market, except for the fact if they're going down for the wrong reasons. And that's what we saw today with that manufacturing uh, data. So if you put all the pieces in there and you say to yourself, are we a little bit complacent back here within a couple percent of the all time highs as we were last September? There's a lot of other ingredients in place, though, from a geopolitical standpoint that I think are a bit messier than they were last year, because every month or every quarter that the trade war goes longer, the damage done to the global economy, I think, is takes that much more to be undone. And, and, and I know we know that economies don't turn on a dime. While markets can on tweets and headlines, mm -hmm. economies don't. And it may take some time to kind of work out of this malaise that we've been in for a yeah, while. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. And I know uh, I think Tony's going to kind of push back on the data and say it may be a, a positive spot. So I look forward to that. But when I when I look at Vietnam printing, this is one of the high growth economies of the world. Vietnam prints at a 50.5 PMI level last night, you actually had the employment component of the U.S. ISM, which basically is telling you somewhat of a real live look into the labor markets. And that's the lowest print we've had since 2016. You look around the world, those PMIs, Germany is basically at the lows of 2009. That's right. Back to you know, June of 2009, I should say, when, when we were talking about things like green shoots. So as Dan points out, it, it, the, the trade war is a double-edged dynamic for traders here because you have a case where some people say, solve this trade war and back to work we go and it's going to be okay eventually. The reality is that it doesn't work like that. I agree. And, and I think the pain that you're seeing, so when you get these prints, and this is why uh, I think you can say this time could be a little bit different if you look at weaker ISMs in the, in the history, because you don't have the prospect of a trade war that really is, is hanging over this whole thing. Right. So I go back to the original question we started off with the show, and that is, could we be seeing a repeat of Q4 of last year? What do you think? No doubt about it. I mean, I think, like, again, I think the, the Things have gotten messier, and I think that 20% peak to trough, to, uh, trough decline came from an S&P that was up 9% in September uh, of 2018, and here we are up 17% in the S&P 500, and there just seems to be no shortage of headwinds, including the dollar that we haven't even talked about making two-year highs, and I, and I can't see anybody who wants to sell a stock, or I can't find anybody who wants to sell a stock. So to me, I think despite defensive positioning, it seems like there's a level of complacency that's very similar to a year ago. Karen? Um, I don't know. I feel like we, we are higher than where we were. We have some things that I don't see repeating that helped us. But I, I don't know. I mean, Tony's going to take the other side of this. With the volatility index here, we haven't seen one thing that's really important. We haven't seen credit markets start to fall apart at mm -hmm. all, right? Which that's they the did in October. That's the one thing left. They last did year. last year. And to me, so I'm short some of the credit uh, stuff because I think that is that is. That could be. The You're waiting for it to turn, then. I'm waiting for it to you turn. You think it'll turn. I She's hedging herself. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that makes right. sense. I'm, yeah. if, I'm long. I will lose money if we have another right. you know, return of last year. But the credit markets haven't turned. The IPO markets have turned very swiftly, very dramatically. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, think, no, I, I, I think that's a really important point, because that's another one of these things we look at year over year. What, what we're seeing is an IPO market that's caving. Okay, yeah. We're seeing um, the, the story stocks caving. People were willing to buy and ask questions later, look at balance sheets later, look at earnings later. Mm -hmm. Profitability is suddenly very important, very different environment, I think, year over year in terms of a tolerance for risk. So I uh, agree with that, Pete. Well, I think a lot of these folks have gone in there just thinking everything you throw money at before it IPOs is going to make you money, right? And, and now they're, they're finally figuring this out. I don't know about if that's such a great read necessarily, but what I do see is, to Dan's point is, when we had that big drop last year, wasn't everybody just elated and excited and everything was all great and everything is fine and whatever? And this is a little bit different because it's not just the FANG names leading, it's other parts of the market that are participating. So it is a little bit more defensive. So from that perspective, I don't think people are just looking at this saying, hey, more I defensive think we as go in better? better in terms of what are they looking forward more to. They already know what happened last year. So because of that, right. I think that does pull back and people right. look at that.